At the end of the lesson, you are expected to identify how to use maximum likelihood to make a good machine learning model. Explain the use of maximum likelihood in machine learning models. And appreciate the use of maximum likelihood in machine learning. So we have maximum likelihood. And in some cases, maximum likelihood is also called maximum likelihood estimation. Let me write here. Okay. So maximum likelihood estimation or simply maximum likelihood. What does this really mean? So we use this to identify the, the values for the parameters of a certain model. So we have actually a lot of models for different purposes. So for example, we have a random forest which is used if we would like to make classifications. So for example, if we would like to know whether or not a certain customer would like to cancel a certain subscription. And also we have a linear regression model. I am so sure you are very much familiar with linear regression, which is used to predict some things. If, for example, if you are into sales, then you would like to predict the sales performance. The important thing to consider when we're talking about maximum likelihood is what we call parameters. Don't ever forget this one because this is the heart and soul of maximum likelihood. Okay, so each model has its own parameters. So random forest has its own parameters and also the linear regression. The question is this, why do we really have to find the parameters of a certain model? The answer is that we need to find these parameters so that we would be able to maximize the likelihood that a certain situation produced by our model or described by our model illustrates the certain situation or data that we actually have observed. So for better understanding, let's have this illustration. As you could see here, we have 15 points to consider. The question is that, how does the maximum likelihood estimation work by intuition? So our task here is that we are going to make a model that best represents or describes the sales performance for 15 straight weeks. So for the first model that we make, it makes this kind of graph. For the second model that we make, it makes this kind of graph. And the third model, this graph is made. Now, the question here is this, which one really represents best the real situation of the sales performance? Which one do you think? Of course, I believe that you can tell me that the second model, this one, gives the best presentation of the data. And maybe you would like to ask me, why is it that the second one really best represents the sales performance? So by glance, we can see that most of the data points are clustered here in this part. So because most of these points are in the second model, then we can say that this one most likely tells us the best picture of the sales performance without overfitting and underfitting. And maybe you would like also to ask me, is it really enough to just say that this one really gives the best performance? So for example, when we are working in a certain company, um, is it enough for a data scientist, for just a data analyst to just show this kind of graph and the other persons in the company will just believe or follow him or her? The question is not. Why? It's because to be able for a certain data to be accepted in most cases, and I really suggest this one that a certain domain expertise is needed for us to be able to make a proper investigation of the different situations, the different conditions surrounding a certain model. And not because the model really captures the picture of a certain situation, it does not mean that it is automatically accepted because it still has to go through a very crucial scrutiny or investigation of 
a certain team. Let's go back to our situation in this case. So we have already chosen that this model is the most acceptable model among these three. So we can say that this is a Gaussian or a normal distribution. If you're going to recall our, our discussion about the Gaussian distribution, then we said and we learned that a Gaussian distribution has two parameters. We have the mean and also we have the standard deviation. So in our future lessons, we're going to learn more about these two parameters, their different conditions, and how are we going to arrive at them at their best value if we are going to take into consideration the different attributes which are presented in matrix form. So in short, we have data set. But of course, I would like to mention this one. But of course, I would like to mention this one that having different values for the mean and the standard deviation would give us different shapes. Just like this one, this one has different mean and standard deviation. This one too has a different mean and standard deviation and also this model. So as you could see, we are testing different values. It's because we would like to see which one or which values really present the best data points. What we mean here is that which of these shapes or curves really represents the kind of observations that we really would like to observe. So with this case, maximum likelihood estimation is the method used for us to be able to arrive at the best value for the parameters. How do we really calculate the maximum likelihood estimation? So let's have this. Before we continue, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button to enjoy our deep learning, mastering machine learning algorithm, and natural language processing courses. You can also enjoy our data science tips. Our aim here is to identify the parameters which really maximize the likelihood. And talking about maximization of the likelihood of our model, what we do here is that we use the natural logarithm and natural log logarithm is actually the conventions when we are talking about machine learning. If you could still remember, this is the formula if we are going to find the Gaussian density function. So we had that in our previous lesson. So please f review or watch those previous lessons when we talked about the Gaussian density function. So what we want to happen here is that we, we would like to easily deal with our data set considering that we have a lot of attributes to deal with and by using only this one would not give us the easier way that we want to use so what are we going to do then so in this case as you could see we are using the logarithm or the natural log and what we do here is that we substitute the expression for the gaussian and we are actually here separate or or we divide our expression in parts because by doing so we would be able to easily and properly deal with our computations what shall we do with the deterministic component or the one which really tell us the the trend or the drift and maybe you would like to ask me so where is our deterministic component so this one let me underline this one is actually our deterministic component so here we substitute our particular deterministic component and this really work well with this one so in our next lesson we're going to have more computations and we can clearly see how everything really goes well with our formulas what is this for why do we have to study this maximum likelihood is very important for us to identify the probability distribution and parameters that give the best explanation of the observed data. So with this, we can properly define the best machine learning model. After all being said and done, let's try this. What is a maximum likelihood? Why do we use natural log in computing maximum likelihood? And what is the importance of maximum likelihood estimation in machine learning please leave your answers in the comment below so that 
we would be able to have a rich interaction of ideas and we can learn from each other well. Do you want to know more about this course? Just click the card on your right screen. You can enjoy our deep learning, mastering machine learning algorithm, natural language processing, and data science tips. Learn and upskill for free.